Mr. Bump by Roger Hargraves This is the sad story of Mr. Bump. The trouble was that Mr. Bump could not help having little accidents. If there was something for Mr. Bump to bump into, he'd bump into it all right. For instance, if you were to see Mr. Bump out walking down a street in your town, and if there happened to be something to bump into down that street, then you know what would happen, don't you? Bump. Mr. Bump was just the same at home. He lived in an extremely nice home, but even there he couldn't help having those little accidents. For instance, one morning, when Mr. Bump went outside his house, he noticed that the chimney pot had come loose in a storm the night before. I must fix that before it falls off, thought Mr. Bump to himself and he hurried to his garden shed to fetch a ladder. It was a very long ladder. Mr. Bump walked up the garden path with the ladder on his shoulder. He turned the corner of the garden path. Crash! went the living room window. Oh, dear! thought Mr. Bump, and he turned to see what had happened. Crash! went the kitchen window behind him. Oh, dear! thought Mr. Bump again and he rested the ladder against the wall of the house so that he could climb up onto the roof to mend the chimney pot. Crash! went the bedroom window. So you can see how Mr. Bump had his little accidents. Mr. Bump had had many jobs, but somehow they never seemed to last very long. As soon as anything got lost or broken, or splintered or chipped, or snapped, or cracked, or torn, or burst, or wrenched, or crunched, or split, or slit, Mr. Bump got the blame. For instance, when Mr. Bump worked on a farm, he tripped over the farm dog and spilt the milk, which he was carrying for the farmer's wife, and which the farm cat lapped up. For instance, when Mr. Bump was a postman, he got his hand stuck in a pillar box, and they had to fetch the fire brigade to come and set him free. For instance, when Mr. Bump was a bus conductor, he fell off the bus and couldn't catch it up again, and all the passengers travelled without having to pay. For instance, when Mr. Bump was a carpenter, he found that when he was hammering nails, he hammered his thumb most of the time, and the nail hardly at all. In order to recover from this series of rather unfortunate happenings, Mr. Bump decided to take a holiday. There he could think about what sort of job he could do where he wouldn't be such a nuisance to everybody. So, off he set to the station to catch a train to the seaside. While Mr. Bump was on holiday, several things happened. For instance, he fell off a boat into the sea, and the lifeboat had to come and rescue him. For instance, one day, when he was quietly walking along the beach, minding his own business, he got his foot stuck in a bucket, and as he couldn't get it off, he had to walk round with it on his foot for hours. For instance, another time he was walking along the beach, he walked straight into a large hole that somebody had dug.
and he had to stay there all night because he couldn't climb out on his own. However, despite all these little accidents, Mr. Bump enjoyed his holiday. And while he was there, he had a splendid idea about what sort of job he should do. It was quite the best idea Mr. Bump had ever had. An absolutely splendid idea. And now, Mr. Bump works happily for Mr. Barley, the farmer. Mr. Barley has a rather large apple orchard on his farm. And that's where Mr. Bump works. Mr. Bump's job is picking apples. But he doesn't use a ladder to climb up the tree to pick the apples like other apple pickers. Oh, no. Mr. Bump has a much better way of picking apples than that. He just walks about. And before long, Mr. Bump, being Mr. Bump, walks into a tree. Bump! And down falls an apple and Mr. Bump catches it. This makes the job of apple picking much easier, and Mr. Bump is very pleased about his new job, and Mr. Barley is very pleased about his new apple picker. So you see, the story of Mr. Bump isn't such a sad story after all. And if you ever bump yourself, you know what to do, don't you? Go and eat an apple picked by Mr. Bump and then you won't feel your bump at all. You'll remember that the next time you have a bump, won't you?
Bump Saturday. Hello, I'm Mr. Bump, and today is Saturday, and what a day it's been. Now you know why I'm called Mr. Bump, don't you? It's because I keep on having little accidents, but they are not my fault, really. They just happen, today especially. It all started when I woke up this morning. I opened an eye, and then I opened the other eye, and those were about the only things that went right today. The sun was shining in through the bedroom window. What a lovely day, I thought, and I jumped out of bed. Ouch! I had jumped out of bed on the wrong side and hit the bedroom wall. I went into the bathroom and tripped over the mat and fell into the bath. Ouch! Again! I squeezed the toothpaste out of the tube onto my toothbrush. Oh, dear. And then I went downstairs. Well, actually, I went downstairs much more quickly than usual. Bump, 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 bump. Ouch, times five. I went into the kitchen to make myself some breakfast. I was going to have a boiled egg, marmalade on toast, and a cup of coffee. What I actually had was boiled coffee, marmalade on floor, and a cup of egg. I picked up the Saturday paper to read what had happened in the rest of the world. I opened it, and somehow or other it tore into two halves, all by itself. What a way to start the day! Then I thought I would go for a walk. A mistake. I opened my front door. So far, so good. And then I felt something in my hand. What was it? The doorknob. Oh, dear. I stepped outside. Mistake number two. I tripped over the doorstep and staggered into an apple tree and trod on an apple and went head over heels into a prickly rose bush and jumped out and slipped on the grass and finished up in my hedge, half in and half out. A chapter of accidents. I somehow managed to get myself out of the hedge, and off I went for my walk. Mistake number three. I saw Mr. Silly, Mr. Greedy, and Mr. Nosy playing football in the park. Hello, they shouted to me. Come and play. I rushed up and took a kick at the ball, a really big kick. Mistake number four. Ouch, shouted Mr. Silly as I kicked him on the shin. I tried again. Ouch! gasped Mr. Greedy, holding his tummy. One more try. A really good try. No! yelped Mr. Nosey, holding his nose. Today has been a very long Saturday. Here a bump, there a bump, everywhere a bump, bump. I even managed to trip over poor little Mr. Small. A chapter of accidents. After apologizing to Mr. Small, I thought I had better go home before anything else happened. I couldn't open the door because it didn't have a doorknob, so I had to climb in through the window. By this time, I had lost count of the mistakes I'd made, but that was certainly one of them. After I had swept up the broken flower pot, I thought I had better have supper and an early bedtime before anything else went wrong. 
Cheese on toast seemed a good idea. Well, actually, it finished up as cheese on carpet. And so to bed. It really has been one of those days, I thought to myself as I jumped into bed, and landed in the bed, the flower bed. Somehow or other, I had jumped out of the window. So here I am, sitting in a flower bed, looking at the moon, and thinking what a day today has turned out to be. Just one accident after another. A chapter of accidents. Bump Saturday. I'm going to write a book about it.